Hey, hello. So in my infinite wisdom, I decided to do a Kotor 2 companion tier list. Let's start from the order of receiving companions. So Kreia is a tier. Not because I like her personality uh, here, is because Kreia increases your experience gain by 3%, 5% and 7%, so you can gain higher level and be stronger. Also Kreia increase your max force points a couple of times, teaches you some force techniques, most of them useless. Uh, but yeah, generally this. So next in line is Aton. Aton is fucking immortal and that would be classified as S tier, but he's also kind of a dick. Like, if you play as female, Aton is fucking insufferable asshole. If you play as male, Aton is kind of gay. I mean, these are characters you meet. Technically, your first follower is Kreia. Next is still Aton, next is T3. So, T3. Uh, in case of power level, is easily S tier. And also give you computer spikes. So he increases your maximum wisdom by plus one. Uh, yours, uh, your character. So you don't ha need to have him in part. And he produces computer spikes. You can immediately swap him for other follower and use him as bench for upgrading items, which is not terrible, it's come handy sometimes. Uh, he can provide expertise in a lot of uh, skills, uh, which are very impactful in Kotor 2, unlike Kotor 1. But yeah, major impact is probably this, that he did that this plus one shit. Okay, next you receive Handmaiden. Mm. I love Handmaiden, she, her starting class is Soldier, which is a full, but she evolved into Jedi Guardian, which is great. Um, but she's kind of jealous. I like her, but uh, yeah. Next, this is my list, so we're going to go with mine. Next I go to HK and her at the almost same time, but not exactly, and uh, Visas goes first. Uh, fuck, this is a problem. So I love Visas. I find her more useful. You can teach her techniques with what don't landing mods. But her, she's kind of... No, she's like your, she's your strongest uh, force user that isn't Kreia. Uh, because what is also important about Kreia, her class is fucking consular, and consular is ultra powerful. Uh, it's uh, basically walking fountain of infinite force points and uh, uh, penetrative force towards enemies with lightning. Also, Kreia have channel to you directly, so if you cast buffs to yourself from end of the map, she they, they, they impact you. So, after I leave Tilos, I go to Coriband. And in Coriband, I get uh, the HK part, one, one I get in Tilos, and then... Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Honestly, this list is boring. So, he increases your constitution by plus two. And he's also rather powerful, but he doesn't provide additional services, only some commentary. Uh, his perspective on love is pretty interesting. And that's pretty much it. A major impact is this plus to, to constitution, it's very powerful. But not as much as it should be. Okay, let's go. Oh, fuck, I, fuck, I, I forgot. I forgot. So, Baudur can produce shields, but only can, but uh, he, and he can do it at any time. He can do it on ship, off ship, and he can become Jedi Guardian, which is a great class, and his starting class is also great. He also has 17 intelligence start, which can be exploited if you go to 18 as fast as possible. 18 intelligence, then becoming guardian on him is not not problem. 
You just have to select four skills that you're gonna max instead of six. But you can also keep him as tech specialist and uh, enjoy basically infinite skill points that will do everything for you. Uh, he's extremely powerful, but his power doesn't come from uh, being in your squad. If that makes sense. If you use him in your squad, he's awful. Uh, he cannot wear any armors uh, unless it will restrict his force powers. And you probably need mod to use heavy armor on him. So it's rather problematic to even use him at all. Uh, it would classify him as D tier character, but uh, ability to have every fucking single skill points covered by one character is kind of insane. And um, that's his major power. He also provides you with nice source of light side or dark side points, just like another companion, to be perfectly honest. Okay, where are we going next? We probably have Mira and Hunter, right? No, Disciple, probably, to pair with Handmaiden. So, when Handmaiden give you bonus to, to that your wisdom throws, are change into your defense bonus. It's probably fortitude defense. It's not like ultra defense, but it, but it's powerful as fuck. It's still defensive rolls. He provides you with maximum mana bonus. He's also soldier, which is very good class, and turn into consular, which is insane class. Uh, but very very squishy. He can be like demo version of Kreia, but because you have Kreia, you don't need him. And Kreia is better and have better perks. You see, in Kreia, the situation of losing arm is nothing. Because you can make her into dualist, uh, which will make her extremely competent with sword anyway. And because her class in consular, she's spellcaster rather than uh, any, anything fighting. Okay, next we go Hanhar and uh, Mira. <laughs> A lot of people may be confused what the fuck. Okay, so Hanhar can increase your constitution by one, your wisdom by one or two, your strength by two, and other sheets. And also you can increase his stats to some crazy levels. Major reason one ha why Hanhar lo load that high is because he cheats. Just like T3, he doesn't and uh, HK, he doesn't need to be in your party to give you bonuses. Also, T3 robot have infinite shield unlocked in Arshada and regeneration module that is extremely impactful. At least for me, it's extremely impactful. I like it. So, so it's making him very cheaty. Okay, Goto Droid. Goto Droid is boring. I love him. A lot of people dislike Goto. Um, but yeah, and Mandalore. Okay, let me justify everything properly. So Goto can produce security tunneler, but exclusively on ship. He also can load you with experience. He, his dialogue, with, you can take Goto, take Kreia, and load yourself like 7000 experience that will be boosted by Kreia. It's like 7 times 7, it will be boosted by 500 XP. Oh, also it's very impactful. If you take, for example, building lightsaber give you 2000 experience. But building lightsaber on Tilos with Kreia and Baudur in party give you 2140 experience. If you take every single dialogue that gives experience out of the ship, you will get bonus from Kreia which uh, culminate in a lot of fucking levels, a lot of shits. Every single kill done with Kreia is better, every single lockpick with Kreia is better, every single disarming mind with Kreia is better. Uh, like, I don't need to justify her, right? It's, it's not post-controversial shit here. Okay, so T3. Uh, T3 give only one wisdom, which is much less than HK, and it's much less than Hanhar. But regeneration module and infinite shield module and having tons of skill points covering by this single little robot is insane. Goto can also sneak as a robot, which is important, but not many people may appreciate this. 
But you might say, oh, it's sort of HK is only robot that have to have droid protocol that never come to play. It's never used in the game. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay, so maybe Mira. What is the problem with Mira? Uh, she doesn't give you anything. This is a major problem. You might say, oh, personality, sort of personality. I don't care. Like, she's not bad, I would pre prefer her over oh, Hanhar as personality, if you will just how I like character, so Hanhar would be fucking here. I like him less than Disciple, and I hate Disciple. Uh, however, uh, bonus stats and bonus uh, experience are way higher. Mm, Aton also allows you to cheese a lot of impossible fights because he's immortal. So, okay, okay. You, you know what we will do? It might be controversial. Mm, because he's immortal. Uh, this is a single reason. Aton have ability that re resurrect him in the middle of fights if someone else is still alive. Once you have very high level with Aton, you can beat impossible difficulties just by having Aton in party. He will clear everything. But power scale in Kotor is so high that you don't need anybody in party after level 15. If you have proper build. So I don't know if this is relevant, because I go to Koriban at level fucking 1, like as soon as I end Telos to get level 15 here and unlock lightsaber and go to this cave and unlock Jedi Weapon Master. Usually I go to cave to drop my light sight to zero and get Hanhar from Narshada. Because in Koriban cave, if you die like fucking 5 times to illusions and then beat Revan, you get lightsaber, you get max XP, and most important you get like fucking uh, minus 42 dark sides. It's literally can change you from light to dark, uh, even if you had like 80, 80 light, and I usually have 80 light to unlock weapon master and then go to, <laughs> to fucking 20 in dark <laughs> to get Hanhar. Uh, Usually dark side is more powerful, but uh, neutral light side get best power in the game, and uh, Jedi Weapon Master is best class in the game. A Sith Assassin is also pretty good with Guardians, Guardian Assassin is fun, fun combo, but I don't know if we play for fun here. We rather mean max, relentlessly, for no reasons. So, Hand Maiden is uh, impactful with this defense bonus. Mm. Okay. I, I think that's that's the good order. I'm, I'm sorry, cheating is for me more impactful. This, this, uh, the, this, all these characters cheating with free buffs for you. Uh, she also gives free buff, but that's some fucking garbage, useless shit, it's some seeing, uh, seeing force or something like this. Uh, it's kind of uh, gimmicky, as you can use it to see uh, who your companions that are not droid and their force alignment and other shit. And she also gives some experience, and you can teach her force techniques. Aton also can be teach uh, force techniques, and Mira and Disciple also can be teach force technique, and Baudur too. Hand Maiden is the only character who cannot be teach force technique, despite the fact that you promise to teach her to preserve fucking knowledge or some shit. Which is idiotic, of course. I, I don't know how much mad I can be about all of this, like... I know there are mods to finish the game, but how many mods do I need, and how many can I install before my game start crapping itself? Like, you know, there is a lot of these problems. Uh, uh, maybe as every droid companion that you can get that is not Goto can get on Goto Yacht bonus dexterity. This might intensify you to take double droid to Goto Yacht, but it's actually with a trap. I always go Kreia HK for Goto because in restore content mod HK have to solo mission and uh, she's kind of weak. 
So I just go to Gotoyah to give him plus one dexterity. And as for Kreia, I take her here because I uh, use stealth to unlock my character without killing almost anything. And then use my character uh, after stealthing Kreia to uh, get as much XP as I can. Yeah. So bonus stats. Uh, so, uh, how impactful any of these losers is in the story? Baudur doesn't need any build, you don't need to level him up. Uh, he will never come handy. Aton have solo with Sion, it's extremely fucking powerful, hard to fight. If you wanna win it, uh, you need to very much build Aton Acer as tank or as insane DPS. And personally, I prefer Nuke. Uh, the, the give him uh, this rope that give him force jump and uh, load him with like powerful lightsabers or some shit. Uh, he can get through this fight, but he need to be prepared. Uh, Visas is probably the best companion. You also get her to confront Nihilus. Which she can kind of weaken him if you want, and she can give you Wisdom Mask from Nihilus, which is also useful. I personally love getting free power, so yeah. Visas giving you free power, give her a bonus. Addition, I forgot about this Wisdom Mask, by the way. But yeah, this is the further solidify her place here. So having Wisdom Mask is also a good combo with Hand Maiden. Because wisdom means you get better defenses, even if that's just like, you know, last few maps. Mm, okay, what here might not be obvious or hard to... Oh, Mandalore, why is he so low? It was my favorite character, Scarab. It was my favorite character in Kotor 1, so in Kotor 2, Mandalore is boring as fuck. He just, like, still like committing war crimes and still gives you stimulant for fun, okay? Uh, but he is all about, oh, find me Mandalorians, and it's very hard to max influence with him. Uh, you might say that's not legitimate complaint, but I don't care. Okreya oh, also, this is like psychotic actions. But she likes some of extremely manipulative actions, so it's kind of fun uh, to like do do something extremely evil or, or weirdly manipulative, and she will be like, "Yeah, yeah, that's awesome! You cause so much evil and harm and suffering." Whoa, uh, which is kind of problematic because uh, you see, Raya reward more light siders. But she gives you so much fucking dark side points. Uh. It's just hard. But yeah, she also gives you a lot of light side points, so it's not like completely one sided. Mm. Visas is walking, but basically, two conversations with Visas. Make handmaiden extremely jealous, which is extremely hard, because you can lock yourself out of dialogues with her, and she can even not teach you this basic shit if you like are too kind to uh, to this blind one too fast. But if you are too kind to handmaiden too fast, you will not not unlock the love dialogue with your fucking companions, which is also kind of problem. <sighs> You need to make Handmaiden Jelly to unlock Love Dialogue. Which is very delicate balance to welcome. Okay, so maybe why I hate Disciple so much. So Soldier Consular is pretty good combination as you can level up soldier to get traits to so not you will not be as useless as consular or you can go consular outright 
uh, and just uh, use basic soldiers to do stuff to, to, for example, wear the best gloves in the game or some shit. Uh, but it's not actually that useful, and these gloves are not as good for him. Uh, the, these gloves are much better on Handmider or Mandalore. Or uh, uh, who else is soldier? No, Mandalore and Handmider. Uh, as for classes, a scout class, in my opinion, is one of the worst. It's basically restricted to be range, range character. But Mira is uh, like level 6 when she joins you, so if you in instant Jedi her and not level her, just instant Jedi, this is very hard because you have to fight Hanhar at uh, this level 1. But yeah, in let's just say you instant Jedi her, not level her, her and uh, just the, she's Jedi Sentinel, which is this middle class of Jedi, it's rather weak. Honestly, you know, Scout is still trash, and, like, she, she, she has the Scout, Scout is terrible, just outright, as basic Scout, so, Scoundrel, get Scoundrel uh, gloves, Cuba Scoundrel gloves, best gloves in the game, 5 dexterity, best for both range and melee, it would be perfect for her, but no. <sighs> And Scoundrel also have sneak attack. If Aton will be Scoundrel Guardian, he will be 10 times better. This is also why we need Rope for him, that gives him Force Jump. So you can sneak attack from distance with Lightsaber. But it's a light side exclusive, and when you play as I, it's extremely hard with because you need to kill all three Jedi, get Hanhar. <sighs> And get Force Enlightenment. It's insane. You need to be very kind and good person. So you will need to tell Kreia a lot of times that no, I am a good person, I'm good boy, and the light side, and she will lose uh, lose like re reputation with you. And you will be I will always help my friends in need. Or or shit like this. This is fucking extremely cliche. So you kind of play like any character. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Uh, even if it sounds like pain. Because don't worry, we still do war crimes. I'm, for example, max influence with this one and minimal influence with this one. I I, did, I dislike Hanhar. Once he, he give me bonuses, I... Yeah. Once he improve my attributes permanently, he goes down. And never is used again when other characters are actually used. Or maybe which characters I actually use in my party willingly. Uh, Kreia, always. 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 Usually. Usually. Actually, no. He, he is unusable. Uh, I keep him at level, uh, level 6. I level him to 6 to get sneak attack, uh, like level 3, and scoundrel, like level 2. And then uh, never use him to get Jedi. To get as many levels as Jedi on him as possible. I basically wanna have as many levels on, as Jedi on every follower. Always. But you can play as you want. Oh, and with Baudur I probably level him to like level 15. No, or to level 11 before I give him Jedi powers. It was mostly to cover as many skills as possible. I wanted him to be uh, to, to substitute my uh, lack of skills. Honestly, it wasn't as as vital as I was uh, thinking. Mm, I'm not sure if you need anything. Oh, Handmaiden is also very fucking stupid. This might be irrelevant. Handmaiden can only cover first aid for you. Only threat injury is her only skill. Uh, so that's kind of lower here, where this guy, for example, he makes B exclusively by having every skill in the game. Uh, this also have uh, every skill in the game, but is also useful in combat, which we cannot say about everybody in this list. Like, I don't like using Baudur for combat because he has these armor problems. 
so let's just say how how often are they in party or how how likely are they selected to party so these two are always present i only don't take Rhea on cory band because she don't uh, agree to go here Hanhar, I unironically un take him to party. Uh, he only goes to party to get Mandalorian side, not know if this count. Or get reputation points. Yeah, reputation points on this. I like Goto, but he's unusable. So how much they are in party or how likely they are selected to party is like this. Uh, visas, I take visas to the ruins on Koriban to the temple, so you can go there get my lightsaber. And I usually take Baudur here, which is actually relevant. I, I think it's making him be single-handedly, because he goes here with me unironically at his level 11. I recently took him. You can build lightsaber immediately in middle of temple, but you should not do that. Because he will give you 2000 XP and you are uh, usually leveling to level 15 in temple. And as you leave, you go right to Kreia so she can give you advanced class. And preferably you take Kreia to Tilos out of the ship and then talk to her to give you advanced class because then you, he, she will give you bonus XP with advanced class. I'm not kidding, we mean Max Tadhard. And then you take Baudur to party build lightsaber, and then you take T3 and start fucking uh, getting free XP from him, upgrading him right in front of Kreia, so she will give you XP from that too. You might say that's not relevant, that's not impactful, or oh, did you know about exploit for infinite XP Saraf? Mm -hmm. As, yeah, I knew about this, I don't care. So, so uh, infinite XP glitch is kind of fun, but why? It's kind of like, like cheese, cheese you out of your fair experience, of experience you could gain fairly playing. And it makes your uh, like uh, game, entire run makes cheaper because of this. It's kind of like you're cheating in games. It, it makes your experience cheaper. So. Yeah, Kreia, Hanhar, Atom HK. I, I, I'm sorry, but no, robot is better than... Uh, this is actually a big pain, because if you could take T3 to Droid Factory, he would absolutely shred everything here. And I think that's it. Mm. Yeah, that, that's pretty much the list. Maybe two mana S tier. Yeah, two mana S tier. It's kind of cheesy right now when I look at this. She's more powerful than these two combined, but she doesn't give us much to player. Uh, it's close. And, uh, basically, core of my fucking run is always Kreia and Hanhar giving me free attributes. And also, I need free attributes from HK, so I can actually fucking use my implants. <laughs> because I go 14 constitution, then I buff it to 15, and then I never add points to constitution ever again. And go every single point wisdom for wisdom build, or strength for strength build. Uh, I have only two builds. And even with strength build, uh, even with wisdom build, I still take fucking constitution and strength from him to carry my implants, because this is plus 3. And wisdom is plus two only. I I don't see reason why I would have to like uh, spend additional four levels on 
constitution for myself and get two wisdom from Hanhar. It's kind of useless. Like, I know Kreia would be proud of you or shit, but I don't care. Like, plus two wisdom is not as, as useful as plus two strength and plus one constitution. It's plus three versus plus two. And all the statistics are important and, and impactful. Actually, strength by itself is very impactful because it helps you in Mandalorian circle. Which, even if optional, I still want to make it easier. By the way, I think you should go extremely like careful with light side, dark side, and outside of getting Hanhar, don't go too much into edge lord territory. But it's so fucking hard when you kill shit to be good person in this game. I think that's pretty much it. This might be the tier list. Probably I should knock something down to B. No, I mean, I don't use T3, but he's great. I would use him more, but uh, he's frustrates me with this fucking repairs for robot. Okay, that's that's pretty much it. See you guys. Have fun.